so uh, it's certainly a, a change. Actually, I prefer the snow uh, compared to the mud that we were experiencing in the last while. That's for sure. So it's a blessing to, uh, to be here this morning as we continue our celebration of the Christmas season. Uh, we are within the 12 days of Christmas, uh, that ends on January 5th, and then that ends with the Epiphany on January 6th, which is the uh, coming of the wise men to, uh, to the stable. Uh, so we're still uh, celebrating our Christmas season. So with that in mind, our call to worship is the uh, Sing Choirs of Angels verse of O Come All and Faithful.
next uh, carol is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear.
But we are all children. We have been children, and we are all still children. And um, I can ask this. There's no uh, younger folks here to judge this question, but uh, do your uh, children or your grandchildren ever say that you're childish? Do they ever say you're acting in a childish way? Um, yes? Yes, and that's, that's a good thing because uh, if we're if we're still able to act childishly, then we are filled with that joy, and we haven't forgotten how good it was to be a child and have fun, do things that uh, were fun instead of all serious stuff all the time. And I'll tell you that uh, when my grandson, uh, Nancy, uh, came from a family of six brothers, uh, she does have one older sister, but six brothers, we have four sons, and our first four grandchildren were boys, and we just had a uh, girl grandchild. So we have a granddaughter, which is quite amazing. And uh, but when the grandsons come to our house, they'll say, uh, Grandpa, uh, will you play farm with me? And little Nash, uh, uh, Kevin and Danielle's lives here by all of a and he comes in the door and we have a table downstairs and we have set up that's a 164 steel tractor. Uh, our tractors are blue so it tend to buy uh, but uh, uh, we have uh, great bins set up and a drive shed and farm fields and tractors and combines and everything. And so I'll sit down and I don't admit it to, but I have fun too, you know, playing with the grandchildren and doing that. So maybe a little bit of inner child happening there. Uh, and I'm sure you have those experiences where your inner child shines through a little bit, a little bit of playfulness. Uh, if you're outside building a snowman or something, chance for your inner child, and, and now we've got snow again, so who knows, the snowman may be on an agenda again, but uh, it is great to have an inner child, and we have another inner child within us, when we came to know Jesus Christ as our Savior, we were, as some would say, born again, we became a new creation in Him, and an infant in Christ, and that's talked about in Scripture as well, being an infant in Christ craving that spiritual milk, uh, the, the gospel, uh, and talking to God through prayer that we start to crave as a child. So not only uh, can we be a playful child of our childhood, we can also reflect upon that we are still a child of God. We're growing as a child of God. And it can be a lifelong adventure growing as a child of God. So we have an inner child in two ways. Our childhood child, and then our child of faith that uh, we came into being when we accepted him as our Savior, and therefore we are growing as his child. Let us pray. Dear God, we're so thankful that we are your children, and your word tells us so many times that we are children of God, and we are blessed by that. And we just ask that you help us to grow in, as your child, to be obedient, to grow in knowledge and wisdom as your child. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now our children's hymn is Can a Little Child Like Me? Oh, yes, we should. Let's do this. We'll do the pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
first reading this morning is from Exodus 20, verse 12. Regard, treat, and honor. Do obedience and courtesy to your father and mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God gives you. And then, turning over to the book of Mark, the New Testament, verses 10 to the chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. And they kept bringing young children to him that he might touch them, and the disciples were, re were reproving them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and pained and said to them, Allow the children to come to be me. Do not forbid or prevent or hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive and accept and welcome the kingdom of God like a little child, this positively shall not enter it at all. And he took them, the children, one by one in his arms, and fervently invoked a blessing, placing his hands upon them. And then turning to the book of Romans, chapter 8, 16 to 18. The Spirit himself testifies together with our own spirit that we are children of God. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering if we are to share his glory. Start uh, to this year and this day. 
So prayerfully, through all that's been happening, we've learned to put our trust in our Lord and put our faith in our Lord. Prayerfully, we've realized that we are not in control of what happens. We do the best we can, we take precautions, we do what we can, but we are not in control of what happens. And, and more and more, uh, this new one is affecting the people and they don't know where it came from, they did it just it's so it's getting widespread. So there's a good chance that we might experience this one in the, in the near future if we haven't already. But we're not in control. God is in control of what happens to us, and we do the best we can. So let's make 2022 a new season of hope in Him and in His plans for us and those around us. Uh, we need that's all we can do is hope in the Lord and do our best to be safe and take precautions and put our hope in the Lord. Now we've just celebrated the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, he came into this world as a baby in a very humble setting. And God sent his son as a baby to signify a new birth in our faith. And that new birth of our belief as well. As we believe in the virgin birth, and we believe in the love that Mary and Joseph had for each other and this baby that they had, and, and we certainly understand Joseph's concern at first about this virgin birth until the angel came to him and explained it to him. And we understand that and believe in all that happened. And we believe that God can do this to have an immaculate conception of the virgin birth. We believe. And this gives us an opportunity, the birth of our Savior gives us an opportunity for a new birth ourselves as God opens the door to us to come into His fold, to begin a life of faith starting as a new child ourselves, as I mentioned in the children's story, to become that infant in Christ. Now, perfectly, I'm sure for most of you it happened uh, many years ago, and you may recall Approximate time, you may recall the exact day when you decided to follow Jesus as your Savior. And for me, it was the exact day that I can recall. And that began that infancy in Christ. And as I mentioned, that craving for spiritual milk, craving to understand God's Word, that all of a sudden it brings on new meaning as we come into faith and we understand what He has prepared for us. But we, it takes time and many years to grow in our faith as a child of God. So today, we're here to continue to celebrate Jesus' birth. But let's have a look at what the Bible has to say about childhood as we've entered, for some of us, many years ago, this infancy in faith growing into a child of God. Because we are referred to, even to this day, as children of God. We are children of God. There's so many references, and we'll have a few of them coming up here. But first, let's think back to our own childhood. Uh, what precious memories we have of being a child. And I say for myself, it didn't involve playing Xbox or PlayStation in my childhood at all. Um, one of my fondest uh, memories, my, my father ran a drag line and, uh, and, and then eventually a gravel truck and construction business. And so I remember when I came home from school, I'd get my blue steel wagon out, and I'd load it up with gravel and take it and fill potholes and lane lane. And I would do that for hours on end, mimicking driving that truck down the road uh, with gravel in it. And that was one of my childhood memories, filling in potholes. And I also remember as part of one of my construction projects of dropping a cement block on my sister's toe. And uh, she wasn't happy. Uh, about that, and I don't, uh, I, I got in trouble for that. I, don't, I didn't do it on purpose. Uh, I don't believe I did. That's many years ago now. But uh, anyway. Now, Nancy also, uh, she grew up on a farm out at Eve's Mills. And as I mentioned already, the six brothers uh, that she had. Uh, and her brothers, so she grew up in a, an environment dominated by these boys and her family certainly had an influence on her uh, childhood, also her athletic, because she was quite an athlete in her day in high school and stuff like that, so uh, that, in that manner too. But her brothers would play practical jokes 
on her. And uh, I'll tell you one, when the, they send her back to the, the back of the farm to get a tractor to drive up, and what they've done though, they've locked one of the brakes on one side of the tractor. Uh, and so she got on, and the tractor was just going in circles. Because one brake was locked on. So she went in several, several circles trying to steer and get to the house, and gave up, walked back to the house, and her brothers were laughing because they played a joke on her. Uh, and that was that was an innocent practical joke, I guess. As long as she hadn't fallen off the track, that wouldn't have been so good if that had happened. But there's so many uh, childhood memories that you all have. Memories of family dinners, church picnics, uh, family trips, the things that you did in your childhood that stick in your mind, uh, even to this day. Now, my parents weren't too much for travel. Uh, they did go to Florida every winter with friends. They took uh, my sister and myself once, and then they never took us again. I never understand why, why did that happen until I had my own children. And uh, then Nancy and I, uh, we had four sons, as I mentioned, and there was days you wanted to see some of that. And so uh, we went on a houseboat trip with friends for a week. And we left those four boys with one set of grandparents for half of it, and the other set of grandparents for the other half. Because nobody wanted them for the whole week, so we <laughs> spread them out. And, uh, and that was a nice break for us to get away. But we missed, by the end of that week, we were missing them and wanted to get back. So parenting was something we never really felt fully equipped for. And I feel that parenting styles changed greatly over from the first child to a uh, Second or third or fourth or more. Uh, we have a neighborhood with six children. And I really believe it's because those middle children wear you down quite a bit. And uh, we had uh, one in the middle there who definitely could say that wore us down quite a bit. And we softened over the years uh, to the point by the time we get the fourth one, and then we say, Well, you want to stay out until 2 a.m.? Uh, go ahead. You know, and, no, it's not even quite that. But you know, you start to soften a little bit as time goes on. You get worn down a little bit. And it's amazing what the Bible has to say about parenting. First of all, it says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, a fruit of the womb, a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies at the gates. And most of these readings are from Proverbs. And there are instructions regarding discipline. Train up a child in the way he should go, even when he's old, he will never depart from it. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Folly is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline drives it far from him. So those are some proverbs uh, about parenting. And uh, there's uh, one more I'll add. You shall teach them to your children. These are God's principles, talking of them when you sit in your house and when you're walking by the way, when you lie down and when you rise. Teach God's precepts to your children. So, there's some lessons from those uh, in terms of parenting. First of all, it talks about raising children to know God. And I know we all work hard at that in our lives, if, if possible, to do that. And sometimes those children went on to, um, to accept Jesus as your Savior in faith. Sometimes, maybe, they did not. And we continue to pray for those situations. Um, so we continue to pray for that connection. The second lesson is to provide calm and gentle parent, parenting without anger. To, to not provoke, but guide in a calm and rational way. And that can be a challenge sometimes because children are designed to push buttons and to try to... Uh, See how test boundaries, that's what children do. Test boundaries, push buttons to see how far they can go. So that calm, rational parenting can sometimes be a challenge. And the third lesson in all of that is that discipline is necessary. Now I don't take that literally to mean to take the rod to the child. Uh, now that was done, in particularly in years gone by. And I do recall when I was in elementary school, uh, I got threatened with the strap. We had a strap when I was in school once. The principal was slapping that thing on his hand. There was three of us in his office. Uh, we had uh, put some burgers in a girl's hair down by the riverside. And that was not apparently a good thing to do. And we thought. Uh, so we were called into 
principal's office to be disciplined, and he, he, and I'd never been, I'd never seen that thing before, and it put the fear in me so much, he never, never got this route, but he threatened me with it, and uh, I was never back there again, uh, because I, that sticks in your memory, and uh, it was, um, the principal's office was right beside the grade 8 classroom, and if someone got distracted, you heard them, and that was also fearful. <laughs> Well, so obviously that's all gone by the wayside. But what I take from that is discipline is to there needs to be consequences for actions, for for misbehavior, for for following wrong directions. Uh, it doesn't need to be a physical punishment, but some consequence. And uh, when the Israelites were in the desert, uh, uh, God told them, "You will be in this desert." For 40 years because they continually disobeyed God. They were rebellious and they did things that were uh, contrary to God's plan for them. They didn't trust in God many times. And so he said, you're going to wander in this desert for 40 years and you're not going to see the promised land. Consequences for their actions. Now there were two, uh, Joshua and Caleb, that crossed the Jordan into the promised land. But the remainder did not enter the promised land. Their, their children and descendants did, but not the, those of that generation did not. So there were consequences for their action. And there should also be consequences for children. So God has messages for the children as well. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Hear, my son, your father's instructions, and forsake not your mother's teachings, for they are a graceful garland for your head and a pendant for your neck. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land. So there's directions for children to be obedient to their parents, to follow the teachings of God, to be familiar with Scripture, to be wise in salvation through faith, but to honor their parents. But children are human beings too. And human nature takes over in them as it does often in us as well, with possible acts of disobedience and, and some acts that maybe aren't quite so honoring to their parents. And there can be a, a period of rebellion as a teenager, and many teenagers face that, and I know I did for a little while, and in my sons, uh, at least uh, two, yeah, I'd say two of them out of the four had a very rebellious period. But they, uh, they eventually, and during that period, they thought that parents knew nothing, uh, that the parents were uh, complete out of touch with what reality was. Uh, but eventually, they came back to understand, well, it wasn't maybe as, as bad as they thought it was, the, the things we were trying to say. So, God has a special place for children. Children are the innocent people of this world. They're untarnished too much yet by the evil that exists in this world. And that's when we get into the scripture of Mark. The people were bringing children to Jesus and the disciples rebuked them and said, keep the children away, be busy. And Jonah said, let the little children come to me. And he Bless the children. But he went on one further to say, Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. So his lesson for all of us there is when we came to God or come to God, we need to do so as a child to put off all the things that are around us, the evil of this world, to humble ourselves like a child, to come before God and open our hearts to not let the clouds of this world be hanging over us when we seek Jesus for our salvation. We recognize that we have sinned. We ask forgiveness. And in this newfound innocence, we come before the throne of grace seeking His love and His acceptance. Like a child. And then, Jesus throughout Scripture calls us his children. But to all who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. 
See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. We must be like a child to come to Him. But there are other reasons that calls, God calls us His children. When we come to believe, we are born into a new family. So we're children in a new family, a new creation in Him. The old within us has been set aside. The old is cast aside and we are a new creation. And we're an infant in Christ when we become a child of God. And we want to get to know our Savior, and that continues as we grow in our childhood as a child of God. When we come to believe, we enter a family, God's family. A family where race, gender, age, denomination do not matter in the least. We're part of an amazingly diverse family with a common bond in Jesus Christ. And Nancy and I only went on one mission trip in our uh, life so far, and that was to Coach Bombo, Bolivia. Uh, we were there, uh, we attended several worship uh, uh, celebrations, and uh, the common bond, whether it was in English or Spanish, it didn't matter. They, we just knew these people were brothers and sisters in the Lord, because the bond was there, part of the same family. Now the scripture lesson from Romans, and if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs of with Christ. Let us think about that for a moment. We are God's children. We have an inheritance. We're heirs. We have an inheritance in His kingdom. But more than that, we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That's what the that scripture says. We are fellow heirs with Christ. So when we go into God's kingdom, we are going there alongside our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are fellow heirs, we inherit, all inherit his kingdom. And the people from around the world, from Bolivia, from wherever, are also part of that wonderful kingdom. All joint heirs in that kingdom. We have our inheritance to share in our eternal life with Christ in God's kingdom. In that place he's prepared for us and all other believers. So again, it doesn't matter race, denomination, age, wealth, nothing matters. We're all common, equal people in God's kingdom alongside our Savior, Christ Jesus, our inheritance. And that's just amazing to think about that we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ to God's kingdom. But there's one thing added to that. The scripture says, we must suffer with Christ so that we may also be glorified with him. That's the second part of that Roman passage. Not that we too go to the cross as Christ did, but figuratively, we can expect to be questioned about our faith, ridiculed about our faith in this modern world. This world that thinks that many people, or even the majority, think that Jesus is obsolete, and even thinks that faith in Jesus represents an intolerance in this world. But nothing could be further from the truth. If we truly are following Jesus and expressing God's love to all around us, to everyone around us, simply not the case. God teaches us and sent Jesus to lead us to be loving to all. Now I mentioned uh, in the reading about Afghanistan and uh, when the U.S. Army pulled out, the Canadian military uh, pulled out, they left a void there and Christians are being persecuted by the Taliban. Uh, I always wondered, what is so threatening about the Christian faith practice in its purity as people who love loving others, but yet there's a fear of the Christian faith that is there, and so there's been attacks on them. There's been families that have been killed uh, for their faith, uh, put in prison for their faith, and there's no one there to protect some of the people anymore. So they are truly suffering for Christ. And we'll see those people again as we inherit God's kingdom with them. So God loves us, his children. It's so wonderful that we are children of God. 
and to be like a little child to receive his kingdom and then grow as a child in faith. So the parallel between the birth of our Savior that we have just celebrated and our new birth as a believer is there. Jesus was born in a lowly manger as a, a pure infant to grow into his mission that God prepared for him. And we are born as a new believer when we, when we say, yes, I believe and accept Christ as our Savior. And we are also growing in our faith. So it's a reason to celebrate at Christmas, not only the birth of our Savior, but our new birth as well. And our childhood of faith. And we can reflect on how far we've come since that infancy in Christ. And to be so thankful that we made the decision to follow Him. So let's enter 2022 with hearts of gratitude for how He's guided our steps. To not look back at the past and what's been happening. But let's go forward with hearts full of love for Him and for those around us. With hearts full of hope for this new year. That He will lead us through our challenges and will see our purpose in Him. Our life in Him. It is so wonderful to be children of God. Let us pray. Dear God, we are as little children abiding in Him, so that when He appears, we may have confidence in Him and His coming. If you know that He is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of Him. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God. The reasons why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But what we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, and we shall be joint heirs in His kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now this song is a uh, part of the uh, families, children. This is a song that I thought of. And uh, I have to say, when I was driving up here this morning on my way to Carroll, uh, this song was on the radio. Now I listened to uh, Willie Grothaus, which uh, is on Sirius uh, XM Radio, and it's old country music. In fact, when, uh, when my wife Nancy gets in the truck, I have to change the station. Uh, it's a kind of, she calls it country twang. But uh, it's this song was played this morning in Willie's Roadhouse, and so it's kind of a confirmation that this was a good one for the day. I hope so.
and strength. We pray for those in this world who are lost and lonely. We pray for those that are victims of terrorism and other sins in this world. And we pray that you walk with them and, and give them strength and your comfort at this time. We pray for those in this world that are hungry and thirsty and help us to share our blessings with those in need indeed around the world. Lord, we pray for our churches in these changing times to, that you give direction to your churches as to what you would have them be and do. And we pray that as a church we keep our focus on God and ministering to those within the congregation and reaching out to those around us. We pray for Pastor Jim and his family as they uh, take a break from uh, at this time and they're recovering from the cold and we just ask your blessing upon them and healing for them, Lord, at this time. We pray that through your Holy Spirit you continue to reveal the truth of Scripture to each of us. And we pray that your Holy Spirit leads us and guides us in your will and ministry for our lives. Help us to listen to you and listen to that still, small voice as you communicate with us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we go forward today uh, into a new year, and we're into day two of this year, let's just be filled with uh, that new hope. I really like the name of this church, Hope Church, because it's so appropriate to be filled with that new hope at this time. So reflect upon our hope and also reflect upon our childhood in Christ and our desire to grow as a, into a teenager in Christ, into uh, God's disciple in our lives. So help us to reflect upon those things. And now may we go forth walking in the glorious light of our friend and our Savior, Jesus Christ. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 